Welcome to Electron Line. Doing triple integrals isn't always a matter of finding the volume. Sometimes we have to multiply the volume element times some function to perhaps find the center of mass or something like that. And we could have uneven uh, what we call density dis distributions or charge distributions. We have all kinds of applications in which we can use triple integrals. So here we have an example where we're going to multiply the function x plus y plus z times the volume element in uh, rectangular coordinates and then integrate over the limits. Well, what are the limits? Well, the limits are a region that's defined by a paraboloid at the top. Only the one quadrant above the xy plane. And so you can see that at the very top, the, the point right here where, where it goes to the z-axis is equal to 2. Here, y equals 2. There, x equals 2. The paraboloid is defined by z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And we can also write this in cylindrical coordinates as z equals 4 minus r squared. The reason why I wrote in cylindrical coordinates is because it's actually easier to do this integral in cylindrical coordinates. Let's first explore the limits in, in Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates. You can see that z would go from 0 to the boundary of the paraboloid, which is defined as 4 minus x squared minus y squared, so that's the upper limit. Notice that when we integrate over the y, we'd go from 0 to the edge of the paraboloid again, so that would be 0 to the square root of 4 minus x squared, because that's the relationship between x and, and y. It's actually circular in shape. And then finally, we're going to integrate in the x direction from 0 to the limit here, which is 2. But Again, like I said, it's easier to do this in cylindrical coordinates. So what we're doing then, we're changing x, y, and z to r times the cosine of theta for x, r times the sine of theta for y, and z, of course, would be the same, and the volume element would be r dr d theta dz instead of dx dy and dz. The limits would then also change when we integrate over the angle theta. It's only a quarter of a circle, so from 0 to pi over 2. When we integrate over dz, well, we integrate from 0 to 4 minus r squared, so we're going to use this equation for the paraboloid in cylindrical coordinates. And then we'll integrate for, for, for over r, it would be 0 to the edge would be 2. So let's do that. Let's first start with integrating over the angle theta. So we're going to integrate r cosine of theta and r sine of theta times d theta. Of course, in this case, the r will be a constant. So this is equal to, we have a double integral remaining over z and over r. And then here, the integral of the cosine of theta. Well, let's see here, I'm gonna pull out an r. I can leave the r in. What's the integral of the cosine of theta? That would be the sine of theta. And the integral of the sine would be the negative cosine, so it's minus r times the cosine of theta plus z times theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And then I have remaining an r, a dr, and a dz. So I've integrated over the angle d theta. And now when I evaluate upper and lower limits, I get the following. Uh, I'm going to run out of room, so I better be careful here. So I have the double integral left over r and over z. When I plug in the upper limit, the sine of pi over 2, well, that would be 1. So we get r minus, well, the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. And if I plug in a pi over 2 here, I get z times pi over 2. So plus z times pi over 2. When I plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of, of cosine, the cosine of 0 is 1. So it would be minus r, but I'm subtracting, so that would be plus r. And when I plug in a 0 here, I get 0. I still have an r, a dr, and a dz. And this is a strange looking r, so there we go. I can combine these two, so that becomes 2r. So let's do that here. That's a double integral of 2r plus z pi over 2, and the whole thing times dr and dz. And I still have an r there, so I'm going to multiply that in. So this becomes 2r squared, and let me add another r here. So it would be z pi times r dr dz. 
Okay. So the next thing, what are my limits here for z? From z is going to be z is going to be uh, from zero to four minus r, and for and that's squared, and from r that's going to be from zero to two. So now I'm ready to integrate over z. So the next integral, we have the integral of r left. So when we integrate over z, we get 2r squared z plus z squared times pi times r over 2 times 2, which is now 4, evaluated from z equals 0 to z equals 4, where am I? 4 minus r squared, those are the limits, and I still have a dz left. Whoop, no, not a dz, a dr left. There we go. Because I'm going to do one more integral over r. So now I have to evaluate this for z. When I plug in the lower limits, I get nothing. But when I plug in the upper limits, I get the following. This is equal to the integral over r of plug in 4 minus r squared for z, so I end up with 2r squared times 4 minus r squared instead of z. That's correct. And then here, I'm going to plug in 4 minus r squared for z squared. This is getting a little messy, but that's all right. So plus, instead of z squared, we write 4 minus r squared squared. We still have a pi. We still have an r, and we divide that by 4. So now I plug in the upper limit. When I plug in the lower limit, I get nothing. And this whole thing then is times dr, and the limit for r is from 0 to 2. So I probably first want to simplify that a little bit, clean things up a little. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. And here I have 8r squared and minus 2r to the fourth, minus 2r to the fourth. So I have 2r squared times 4 and 2r squared times a minus r squared. And then here, when I multiply this out, I get 16 divided by 4, which is 4 times pi times r, so plus 4 pi r. When I multiply these two, I get minus 4r squared times 2, that's minus 8r squared, divided by 4 is minus 2r squared times pi r, so minus 2r squared, minus 2r cubed, minus 2 pi r cubed, minus 2 pi r cubed. So again, when you multiply a binomial, you get the first term squared, twice the product of the two, and the last term squared. So here I have twice the product of the two, that would be minus 4 r squared divided by 4, that's minus r squared, times 2 is minus 2 r squared, times pi r, that's minus 2 pi r cubed. And finally, we have the last term squared, which is r to the fourth, times r, which is r to the fifth, times pi divided by 4. So it would be plus pi r to the fifth divided by 4, and the whole thing times dr. Better put some parentheses there as well. So now we end up with one, two, three, four, five terms all have an r in them, r to the first, r to the second, r to the third, r to the fourth, and r to the fifth, so we cannot combine those terms. So finally, I can integrate that and evaluate from 0 to 2. So this becomes equal to, the first term becomes 8r cubed over 3. The second term would be minus 2r to the fifth, minus 2r to the fifth, over 5. The next term would be plus 4 pi r squared over 2. The next term would be minus 2 pi r to the fourth over 4. And that's a lousy looking r. There we go, that's better. And let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. The last term I get plus pi r to the sixth over 6 times 4, which is 24, evaluated from 0 to 2. Notice when I plug in the lower limit, I get nothing, but when I plug in the upper limit, I get a whole bunch of things. Here we get 2 cubed, that's 8, times 8, which is 64 divided by 3. The next term I get r, that's 2 to the fifth, which is 32, times 2, which is 64, divided by 5 with a minus, so minus 64 divided by 5. 
The next term, 2 squared, that's 4 times 4, which is 16, divided by 2, which is 8. So I get plus 8 pi. The next term, I get 2 to the 4th, which is 16, divided by 4, which is 4, times 2 pi, that's minus 8 pi. And it looks like those two terms cancel out. And then I get my final term right here, r to the 6th, that's 64, divided by 24 times pi. So that's uh, plus pi times 64 divided by 24. Let's see here. We have 24, that's 60. Yep, that is correct. So now we need to simplify things a little bit. First of all, the 8 pi's cancel. Here we have 64 divided by 3 minus 64 divided by 5. The common denominator is 15. So 5 times this. So this becomes 320 minus 3 times this, which is 192 divided by 15, and then plus pi times, we'll see here, 64 and 24, that would be 32 and, um, well, actually, yeah, 32 and 12, divided by 4, that would be 8 over 3. So plus 8 over 3 pi, and 320 minus 192, that would be 128, so this becomes equal to 128 over 15, plus 8 over 3 pi. And this is the solution to that integral. Now, this is not a volume per se. This was integrating over the volume with the volume element, but the volume element multiplied times a function called x plus y plus z, converted to cylindrical coordinates. It's r cosine theta plus r sine theta plus z, multiplied times the volume element, and then the limits of integration are determined by the limit of the volume over which we're integrating. Remember, this was a paraboloid. The equation for the paraboloid in rectangular coordinates was z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. In cylindrical coordinates, it's 4 minus r squared. So we integrate in that volume only under this quadrant right here above the xy plane. So that small little section goes to an angle of 90 degrees this way from 0 to 2 in the z direction, from 0 to 2 in the y and in the x direction as well. So when we plug in the correct limits, converting them from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, we do find the correct result when we do that integration. And that's how it's done.